All right, so this week I've got a fun little thing for the holidays using 3D and Photoshop CS5 Extended. And what we're gonna be doing is creating those reflective um, Christmas ball ornaments you see every year. It becomes pretty much a staple of the holidays this, um, these days. And uh, we're gonna create it from scratch entirely inside Photoshop. Now, I've gone ahead and created a document here that I'm going to use to build the graphic in, and it's a square document format, so you can see if I go to image size, it is uh, roughly eight by eight inches at 100 pixels per inch. So I'm working small just for the sake of demo. And I also have a image I got off of iStock Photo, and this is a, just a generic Christmas background. It's a Christmas decorated tree with lights and um, some of the exact um, kind of balls we're talking about, those ornament balls, different types in here. And I'm just gonna use a very small section of this background image. There's a lot of things going on and I don't really need this much of that. I really only need a small part of it because we're gonna be close in on the tree in our final concept. So I'm gonna go in the toolbar here and grab the rectangular marquee tool and just hold down the shift key so I can get a square selection and just draw a selection over an area of the image that I want to use, which is roughly that area there. Now I'm gonna go and grab the move tool over here grab that selected area and just drag and drop it into my working document. There we go. Now, it did come over considerably smaller than my canvas area. That's fine because we're gonna scale it up. Now, you might think by scaling it up, we're resampling it up so the, de um, the detail and quality is going to diminish greatly. Yes, it's going to, but because this is going to be a background element, I'm going to put an overall blur on anyway, it's gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna put it in free transform. Uh, press Command or Control T. Hold down Shift and Option. This would be Shift Alt if you're on Windows, and I'm just gonna scale this graphic from the center and drag it out and go a little bit beyond the edges of my canvas. There you can see. And let's nudge that in place. There we go. All right, so there's the background in place. Now what I wanna do is go ahead and create my 3D element. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new blank layer. Fill that layer with a simple base color. We're gonna change it later, but for now let's just go ahead and use 50% gray at normal, 100%, there we go. And simply go to the 3D menu. Again, 3D is a CS5 extended only feature. You do have it in CS4, but you don't have um, certain features like Repuse, but we're actually gonna be using the standard shapes. So this is also available in CS4 extended if you have that as well. So go to 3D menu, go to new shape from layer and go down here and choose sphere. It's gonna take that gray fill and wrap it around this 3D sphere as you see right here. And now what we can do is because it's 3D, we can add reflective properties to it and make it look like it's really sitting in this scene here rather than just floating on top of it. So what I wanna do is actually turn off the visibility of that 3D layer for the moment, go back down to the layer containing this uh, background image, and I'm gonna go into the edit menu. All right, let's do a command all. Do um, command A or control A to select the entire image on that layer, go under edit, copy. Now, got that uh, background uh, image copied to the clipboard, I'm gonna reactivate the 3D layer and then open up my 3D panel. Go under window, down here to 3D. And just uh, minimize this a little bit here. So inside the 3D panel, all I'm gonna do is go over here to the third tab over at the very top, which is the materials section. And since the uh, sphere only, only has one side, it just lists one mesh surface, which is the sphere material. With that highlighted, go down here to the reflection property and increase that to 100%. Now, we don't see anything reflected because there's nothing in the environment to reflect. So we're gonna go into this environment setting just above reflection and click on the menu and go in here and choose new texture. Now, it's going to remember the image we copied to the clipboard a moment ago, which is that background layer, or that background image, and it's going to remember the dimensions of that image, which is 800 by 800 at 100 pixels per inch. We'll click OK. It creates that document. That's all it did. Now we need to go back to that same menu next to environment and go into open texture. And then go into the edit menu and choose paste once that file is open. You'll notice it opens a new document completely. Go under file or edit menu to paste. It'll paste that background image in there. That's all we need to do. I'm gonna go ahead and close the document and save the changes. And now you can see that environment is now reflecting around my sphere in the scene. Now, you don't typically see gray Christmas balls hanging on anybody's tree. That's kind of boring. 
So let's give it a little bit of color. So I'm gonna go into that uh, layer and under the textures here in the layers panel, you can see layer two, that is the diffuse material, which is the layer containing that gray fill from a moment ago. I'm gonna double click it and open up that document and there's that gray fill. All we're gonna do here is fill it with another color. I'm just gonna go ahead and choose a red since uh, those ornaments tend to come most typically in red, or they look most uh, come, look the best in red in my opinion. So I've highlighted red, I'm gonna go ahead and option delete, fills that layer with that red color, close the document, again, save the changes, and now it's reflecting that environment and the ball is nice and spherical, reflecting the environment and reflective. Now. Just gonna go in and adjust a few other properties here. In the same material section, I'm gonna increase the gloss to around 25. And put the shine at about the same place too. Actually, I'm gonna put the shine a little bit higher. So we get a little bit of a glare of light on that uh, ornament there. That looks pretty good. Now I can certainly um, play around with a whole bunch of different settings here. I think you get the idea of how it looks in the environment. Now. In essence, this is really still kind of floating in space as there's nothing that it's hanging from. With that, it usually has that little knob on the top and the, and the string or hook uh, hanging from it. So let's go ahead and add that element there. So I'm gonna create a new blank layer. And again, fill it with a base color, 50% gray, I'll be fine. Once again to the 3D menu and choose new shape from layer. And this time we're gonna choose cylinder. And I'll go ahead and make that graphic a little bit smaller. I'm gonna use the not use the mesh tool rather, but go in the toolbar and grab the uh, 3D object slide tool here in the 3D tools. And let's just scale that uh, object down a little bit and perhaps just slide it up. Now, I wanna merge this with the sphere, the existing sphere, so it picks up the elements and I can combine them so it really looks like it's all one element. But before I do that, I wanna do the most critical step that I can think of when you're doing 3D in Photoshop and that's go into the file menu and go to save as. Because you have no idea how many times you will probably crash something and have to start over. You don't wanna to have to do that. So I'm just gonna save it to the desktop there, that's fine. And now in the layers panel, I'm gonna go ahead and hold down the shift key, select the layer containing the cylinder and then the layer containing the sphere. Then go under 3D to merge 3D layers. It's gonna combine those two elements. Now you can see that cylinder is kind of cutting into that shape. So now I'm gonna use the mesh tools, which are different from the tools in the toolbar, whereas these will allow me to modify the position of the mesh as a whole, or as an individual shape, even though it's um, merged together. So go down here, I'm gonna first get the 3D mesh scale tool. Now I'm gonna, as I rotate the scale, you can see that, or as I scale it down a little bit, you can see that the top and bottom of the cylinder are still visible and not moving. Well, we're not needing those anyway, so I'm actually gonna go in the mesh section of the 3D panel and just turn off top and bottom. So all I have is the cylinder shape. So now, again, using those 3D mesh tools, I'm actually going to pan this shape up and scale it down. And then just nudge it back using these individual 3D mesh tools to position it right about there. So now it looks like it's got the little piece sticking out of the top where you would hang the ornament from your tree. Now, of course, that wouldn't be gray either. So let's go inside that same layer and give it maybe a gold fill, something like that. Once again, close the, or close the file, save the changes, and there we have it. Now, just like the sphere surface, we need to go and make this surface reflective as well. So again, inside the 3D materials, I'm gonna select the cylinder material and just raise that reflection all the way to 100%. Just like before, I'm gonna go into that environment setting as well, because if it stands to guess that this sphere would be reflecting the environment around it, so too would the piece at the top. So again, in the environment setting, new texture, same size because it's still in the same clipboard. It's the same image in the clipboard. Open texture, edit, paste, same background, close the document, save the changes, and there those elements are now reflected in the overall scene. And then that's um, pretty much all we need to do now. Let's just go ahead and do a quick render so we get all the other elements in place here. So I'm just gonna go under to the scene section of my 3D panel and just do a quick ray trace draft. So any other elements that didn't get, you can see the little 
uh, cylinder elements reflecting in the surface of the sphere, which is pretty cool. And there we have it. So a couple more things. Let's add a new layer and put that new layer between the layer containing the sphere and the background. I'm just going to put a very tiny sliver of selection up here at the top. And this is just going to be a very small string for the ornament to hang from. And even change the blend mode, perhaps, to let it blend in with the scene a little bit better. There we go. It's like that. And then one final thing, and in fact, I just thought of this. I hadn't, this hadn't occurred to me before. If I add a layer style to the layer containing the 3D sphere, just like any other layer, I can add a drop shadow and just bring it down, make the size bigger. Really helps it sell it in the scene, like it's really just kind of casting a shadow on the other branches in the background there. And there we have our festive holiday ornaments created entirely from scratch. And it's realistically reflecting that background environment to really look like it's sitting in the seam. You can really see the fun you can have with just simple 3D shapes and even lights. I could go in here and color these lights that it's using just by going in the color swatch and changing them. If um, the, these were in fact colored lights on this tree, then I could make them the lights that were shining on the object, the various colors of the lights to really sell the scene more so. Not necessary in this case because the lights are white, but you get the idea. Oh, and one last thing. Remember that background I told you the quality was gonna be a little bit less because we scaled it up. I'm just gonna go back and reselect that layer and run a very small blur on it. Go under filter to blur and put a Gaussian blur. Certainly not that much. Let's go with about one pixel. Maybe one and a half. Just gives it a little bit more blur to it. Takes any of that little noise or JPEG noise that might be in the image if it's really up close. Just kind of takes that out, blurs it up a little bit more, and you can notice how it puts more focus on the ornament itself, which is directly in the foreground there. So it really makes a big difference.